Welcome to Hair in the Hawthorn. I'm Kate, your host today, and we have a guest who needs very little introduction. The paranormal world will know him for his work on TV as a medium, but he's so much more than that. He's a teacher and a guide in spiritual realms. I'm going to let him introduce himself and talk about all the work he's been doing since his encounters on the TV. So without further, further ado, I'd like to introduce David Wells. Hi, David. Hi, okay, Kate. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, Could yeah. you tell us a little bit about yourself and the kind of work that you're doing nowadays? Um, work's very different nowadays. I stopped doing paranormal work about, uh, it must have been about nearly 10 years ago, wasn't it? Something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. Seems impossible, but it's true. Mm -hmm. um, I never really did much before the show, in all honesty, because my interest was Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, past life work and astrology, et cetera, through that. Mm -hmm. So that was my, my mainstay and remains so when I did columns and uh, things for newspapers. But I've had a bit of a sabbatical, really, kind of forced mm -hmm. by a karmic conditions, you might say. Yes. Um, certainly strong astrology, like, I, you know, like I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. um, it's been big times for all of us. But, but prior to, to recent events with lockdown, et cetera, um, a lot of things changed in my life. So now I'm... I'm reconsidering where I'm at with it all, in mm -hmm. all honesty. I'm just for the first time in a very, very long time, um, leaving space for things to come in rather than chase it. Yeah. And that's been a huge experience for me, um, highly enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So now I just produced my first set of Oracle cards, which will be out in the next four or five weeks, hopefully. I'm so excited about those. <laughs> on Kabbalah. Yeah. Um, uh, working on my second set of cards, which wow. is... Uh, redoing the website, redoing the offer, you know, redoing what I, because I was doing readings and I was doing, you know, past life workshops and things. And, and mm -hmm. past life workshops will probably continue. Mm -hmm. um, but wanting to do a lot more one-on-one -on -one offers and maybe run courses online that are more about spiritual development and less about, um, you know, tall, dark, handsome strangers and, mm -hmm. and predictive work, to be honest with you. It's more internal work than what I'm doing. Yeah. And working... Uh, with the angelic realms more than I ever have before as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> That's you in a nutshell right now. And I make a mean quiche. Oh, I'm having quiche today. That's coincidence. Oh, I'm not psychic. <laughs> you definitely are. So you, you just briefly spoke then about the workshops that you do, and I have had the pleasure of going on a couple of your workshops um, and also doing the Awakened Soul course, which was absolutely mind-blowing and good, literally mind-blowing. Uh, it did pop my brain on a, on a number of occasions. And I, I do want to come back to, to talking to you about that. So in the context um, of what we're going to be chatting about today, which is going to be elementals in the fae or fairy, um, we're going to be talking about that in context, context of, uh, the, how do you say it? Kabbalah? I say Kabla. Kabla, yeah. Yeah, some people say Kabbalah. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I don't get hung up on that, you know. Yeah. But I say Kabla. Yeah. Kabla. So, in terms of that, could you just give us a brief overview of what it is? And I know you're going to say that it's everything because that's what you usually say. <laughs> it's everything. Yeah. Uh, could you just go into a little more in depth of what it is and um, just very briefly, the, the particularly the tree. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a symbol, you know, the, the, the central symbol of Kabbalah is a tree, the tree of life. So you probably, most people, when they see the symbol, they go, oh, yeah, I've seen that before, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you work in the spiritual world. So it's the, if you like, it's, um, you know, I'm big on, you know, I always say that symbols are everything. They, be, they transcend language. They're far bigger than language. Symbology is far bigger than actual language. Mm -hmm. And um, the tree does that, but it, it encompasses um everything <laughs> in the world and the unseen world so if you like you can find on the on the map I mean, see it's a map and you mm -hmm. can find literally find anything on it you know you, you can pinpoint you know hippopotamus right through to the archangel michael you can find out where it will sit on the tree mm -hmm. um and it, use it as a map so you start you start at one end you start at the bottom at malkuth mm -hmm. uh initially because that's where we are starting to climb back up. We actually started incarnation at the top mm -hmm. in Kepa, but we're coming back down. So we're trying to find a way back up. We're swimming upstream, really, which is why mm -hmm. sometimes feel really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I love about it, to be honest, Kit, is the system of it. it means that you start here, mm -hmm. then you do, this, then you do that, then you do this. There's none of this. Oh, should we do this? Or should we do it? Oh, we'll pop over here and have a look. Oh, there's yeah. none of that. 
there is a definite system mm -hmm. and it really helps guide your spiritual development because you're not you're not crystal coursing over there and you know and a bit of astrology over here and a, it, you, you're taking your time with it you know yeah definitely and each and each of the, the pathways um and the is it oh, i'm gonna have to remember now is it sephora's so the oh. spheres yeah that's it the, uh, the spheres each yes. of those contain um huge amounts of lessons the kind of the, the the they just carry on and carry on and carry on but the they are kind of have a central umbrella don't they of, of, of a theme of, of what that means and, and where you're going to go and, and how you're going to interact with the rest of the tree yeah the the, the singular is safara so one safara, safara and yeah the plural is sephiroth that's where people i think get confused yeah uh, yeah and they hold the temples if you like they are the energy points mm -hmm. that push the energy along the paths um and they're they you start off by learning the those first mm -hmm. so you look at the temples first then you start on the paths of which there's a further 22 mm -hmm. you know yeah it's joyous so one of the things that we did when we were doing the course uh was we looked at uh doing med meditations that were very specific and if i remember rightly it was in the earth temple that we did some work with the elementals yeah. um which i want to talk to you about today and yeah. If you could just explain about why that was important for us to do that, why is it important for people to understand what the elementals are within that? It's the very one of the very first temples you is the very first temple you do. Mm -hmm. uh, the temple of um, Earth, as you said, it's called Malkuth. Yeah. Some people pronounce it Malkuth, and mm -hmm. you know, the temple doesn't care what you call it, just turn up. You know? Yeah. Um, it's important because the elements in the, that you meet in the temple remind you everything is made of air fire and water everything you know those four basic elements are everything that build the earth around us mm -hmm. essentially and without them we wouldn't have any of it mm -hmm. uh, and also I, I strongly believe you know, it's the same when we move up and we go into yes or things we, you always have to go through the astral worlds to get anywhere you can't mm -hmm. get anywhere without going through the astral worlds and i think with the elements you can't go anywhere without paying respect to the elements elementals mm -hmm. because they they are they're of earth so you you're you're acknowledging their existence and paying homage to them and i think that's um as with all beings on the tree to be honest every single being on the tree deserves that even the more challenging ones of course they do um but i think the elementals we know they can be naughty as well on occasions yes. um <laughs> so i think paying them due respect is, in, is important. Yes, really. definitely. So you say that they're on the earth plane. Does that mean that they are, um, sorry, my dog is growling. This is going to be one of those days. I'm just going to chuck her up on the bed. One second. I do apologize about that. So you're saying they're on the um, on the Earth plane. Um, does that mean that they are closer to us than, say, other astral beings are? Does that mean that their uh, realm is closer to us than other astral beings? They're definitely closer. Yeah, they're, they they have a higher aspect when you move up the tree um, into Tifa in particular. But but they are all around us. Yes, and anybody who walks through a forest can tell you that, really, can't they? Mm -hmm. Um, when I walk my dog every morning in the forest, I'm really always very much aware of them. And I always say good morning and I always pay respect to them in my head as well. I always mm -hmm. or giggle if I see one because um, they make you laugh. Or there's a <laughs> fairy doors appeared all over the forest suddenly yes. that, I, um, that I go to. Somebody's obviously been out there putting a few down. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, they are closer to us because by their very nature, that's their role. Mm -hmm. but their, their job is to keep keep it all going really you know? yeah and keep an order it is a, it's a, a strange thing with the with the fairy doors it seems to be springing up all over the country independently without anybody really making any communication and it does make me think about why at this particular time now we're in this lockdown situation that that's actually happening what are your thoughts on that people are bored rigid <laughs> Yeah, but they could do anything. They could sort of paint golden dinosaurs and put, you know, uh, put them around a park. Or um, I don't know. I think um, there's a, you know, yourself. There's a resurgence in all things fae. Yes. And elements. it might just be as simple as that. And and and, and seriously though, kids have got time off with their mum and dads, and they're they're making fairy doors because kids love that sort of thing. And and mm -hmm. you know, and they want to put them out there. They don't want them sitting around the front room, do they? They want them. Yeah. 
Do you think it's an easy access for people into sort of being spiritual then? Do you think this is kind of a, a bit of a gateway thing and it's an easy way for them to get in contact with nature and get in contact again with their own spiritual aspects? I think it's a way. I don't think there's any easy ways. And, and you know, we, we know ourselves that with the Fae and with elementals, that um, there are specific things that you should really take care with. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's easier than others because there's more of it. Mm -hmm. It's also deeply embedded in our, our psyche from, you know, when we're children, thanks to Disney, dear. I say Don't that. mention Disney. That dirty <laughs> word. Yeah. And, I know, but, but, but it's true, but that's how, um, when I, I live in, I now live in Dumfrieshire, and mm -hmm. um, we have, um, Jay and Barry went to my school, so Peter Pan right wow. went to my school, and they've opened up a, a thing just nearby, and they have the bell that inspired him to call her Tinkerbell in the, in the museum. It's a, it's a museum kind of, you need to go there, it's great, mm -hmm. it's called Motbray, and they have a Wendy house, and um, tea room, uh, mm -hmm. shop. Um, but they also have like the, the original bell. So those ins little inspirational things uh, that kids get, that, that's what they remember. You, we, I know we screw our nose up at Disney and, and I watched Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Yeah. And, and, and it just, I, all the way through, like, but she's the nicest person I've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I watched it. But when you're a child and you're watching Tinkerbell, you're not aware of all that. Um, that that's what's drawing you in. Do you know what I mean? And I'm all mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And I think I say in workshops, you probably heard me saying in workshops about the Fae, mm -hmm. that we need to talk about them because it is Tinkerbell. Mm -hmm. If you stop, if you stop clapping, if you stop applauding, they, they fade because yeah. they fade from the memories. So actually we do need to keep clapping for Tinkerbell um, and all the other fairies. Definitely. Um, I mean, I recently came across uh, the theory of that comes from the old gods, that if you stop believing in the old gods, then they disappear. And that kind of moved into the theories of, of the Fey realm, which is quite interesting. So there's that connection with the spiritual again. Uh, it's almost like a stepping stone, up, isn't it? It's also rule number one is to um, if you're working with anything mm -hmm. and if you decide to work with the Fey or element, well, we'll get to the difference in a minute, but if you want to work with, um, say, the tree of life and the archangels on the tree and, and all the beings, and fundamental is that you have some kind of faith in that. Mm -hmm. But once you start to mention the names and once you start to work with them, once you put them into your conscious mind, the subconscious will bring them towards you because you're focusing on them. It's the red car, yellow car thing. Yeah. If, I, if I just talk about red cars, you're going to see red cars everywhere. Mm -hmm. If we start to talk about the fae, you're going to see it everywhere because it starts to implant itself. And that's what keeps them real from, from archangels down to, to um, you know, elementals. Mm -hmm. So in terms of elementals, briefly, uh, we were looking at the four elements, obviously, and um, they, they are very specific. Um, in the fact that they have kings or leaders um, and they also have names. Could you just briefly say about what, what the, the hierarchy is and what, what they're each called? Well, they, they each have an archangel. So there's an archangel of earth, air, fire and water, which most people would know. So earth is Uriel, mm -hmm. air, air is Raphael, water is Gabriel and fire is Michael. Mm -hmm. So they have an archangel, then they have a king. Actually, I've changed that with my oracle cards because I have a queen. <laughs> <laughs> I never felt Nixa, Nixa who's of water, the, mm -hmm. the queen of water. It, the emotional realms and the watery, the watery worlds never felt right with the king. You could say Neptune and all that, but, but, but the feeling of it. Um, and I was doing my research for the, for the cards, and I came across um, a writer who I very much admire and Kabbalist called Israel Regardi. Mm -hmm. And I was reading his, um, his descriptions of, of Nixa. And the very first thing he said is, is she. And, so I, and you think, well, yeah. And actually, he also um, calls Sandalphon she, mm. uh, which is, yeah, interesting, isn't it? Mm. So, um, so water then, <laughs> water then, the, um, the elemental queen of water is Nixa, mm -hmm. he said. Earth is Gob, mm -hmm. um, fire is Dijin, mm -hmm. and air is Peralda. Mm -hmm. um, and then we come down into their elemental. So air then is the sylphs. The gnomes are of earth, mm -hmm. water are the undines, and the salamanders are of fire. Mm -hmm. And they all relate on, on an emotional level, don't they? Um, and, and to the tarot and astrology as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anything, anything that you can put air, earth, fire, and water to, mm -hmm. then yes, you can you can link those specific um, from the archangel down to those to those elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in in my digging in trying to find the answer to the the, the question of what's the difference between fey and elementals, I came across a, a piece of research that said that the elementals actually came out from. Um, I'm going to get this wrong, from 1600s, 1500s, 1600s and the work of alchemists and these were almost had one foot in, in the material realm and one foot in the fey realm and they could traverse quite easily and because of that alchemists actually brought them in to use them into their work which would, to me was a really lovely explanation because they could be very much material as well as they could be very much energetic or on a vibrational level. Uh, for me, where I see the realm of fairy is very much vibrational and that material is less probably than the elementals. What do you, is that something that you feel as well or? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think the, uh, for me, the difference between fey and elemental, mm -hmm. very fine line. Elemental is divided into those four very specific quarters, mm -hmm. earth, air, fire and water. Fey is just about everything else everything i mean you can you could call gnomes fey mm -hmm. and you can certainly call fairies fey obviously sylphs but i think what you will find is you will find that some of the fey realms so there could be a fairy so technically air if you wanted to put it into a um into an elemental term but that particular fey that particular fairy could actually have more of an affinity with fire so it's like a subsection to me mm -hmm. But even though you have the sylphs, and, and this is actually echoed in, uh, in Kabbalah, so you can have fire of air and you can have fire of water and fire of earth. So the two elements sit together, that's highly possible. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's how the fey would work. So, so even though there are fairies of air, it's also a fire air or it's a water air or it's an air air, mm -hmm. you know, it's a double air. So that to me is how the fey would work. Okay, so do you, um, I mean, I've got feelings, um, and it's something that I want to explore more, that the, the angelics and the divas actually sit within that realm, sort of in the, in the upper upper sort of uh, yeah. part of that realm as well, and, and the more mischievous and more sort of malevolent um, entities that you get as well that sit in the kind of the low vibrations of, of, of that realm. I mean, for me, I, I believe fey just means the other, it just means the other world. Um, I'm still trying to figure out where that fits in sort of astral plane plainly wise so angelics do you, is that something that you think kind of fits into that realm or are they outside that realm for you or i think they're outside for me i think mm -hmm. they can obviously go there um, and communicate with otherwise you wouldn't have the elementals and the, uh, but i think the the angelic realms if you like are, are not a much higher vibration um they're also they have a wider spread if you if you think about it they have a you'll find that like archangels, and we're talking archangels, not, not the angelic hosts, but archangels have a wider spread. So they're about love, they're about, um, you know, compassion, they're about gratitude, all those sorts of things. When you come down to the fae, you'll find that it breaks, it comes down even further into our emotional base. So a fae can be, it can be about love for that person. Do you know? Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Whereas an yeah. archangel is not going to say, "Oh, well, I'm going to fix you up with Bob around the corner." Yeah. Whereas a naughty fairy might get a bit mischievous about that. Where, but the the archangels wouldn't involve themselves with it. No, know? no, no. So, it's too trivia for them. Well, I think it's just not their bag. It's not just their. It's not their thing, really. Yeah. They're more of a managerial. Whereas the the fae tend to be. Uh, more you know supervisory stroke worker level yeah yeah definitely definitely agree with that so talking about the face specifically um you told me a story uh i think it was a couple of years back and it always it's such a sweet story and it always stuck with me and i know that i've booked you perhaps on every workshop for you to tell people this story and i have i have this story i have asked you if you're okay with saying this because yeah. um I know myself from from uh, fairy experiences and talking about fairy experiences that I've had that people do look at you like you're a nutter. You know, yeah. you can go and say, I've seen a ghost and people go, oh, OK. Or you can say, I've talk seen to yeah, I talk to Angel. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I've seen a UFO. Yeah, whatever. You say you've seen a fairy or something from that realm and you, they look like they're going to institutionalize you instantly, don't yeah. they? So could you just tell us um, your lovely gnome story? 
I love the Milne story. Okay, so it was during my training, and we'd gone through the elemental realms to intellectually, mm -hmm. um, and we'd spoken about them. We were working through each one, you know, weekly, mm -hmm. um, and we got to gnomes, and you know, I'd, I'd gone okay with sylphs and salamanders, undines. We got to gnomes, and and I thought, well, they're going to be something different. They're not going to be garden gnome. You know? Uh, partly they're not. Uh, they are, sorry. So they kind of know me. They're gnarled little beings, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, right, gnomes. And I had a real struggle with it during my training, thinking, is this just a bit too far? And and like you said, I was thinking, maybe I'm a bit bonkers really for this. Um, so one night I was, um, I'd gone to bed like normal and I wasn't hypnagogic or hypnopompic. Um, one of the two, I definitely, I was, I was wide awake, I think, he says, and um, I had a giggle in my room. Now I was, I was at the stage in, where I was a bit uncontrolled still as a medium and a bit um, spontaneous things would happen. So astrals would walk in or, you know, I, things I hadn't quite got a grasp on. And I thought, what's, what's that? And then I heard it again, but it was like a couple of little giggles and I thought, oh, just a, it's very, very odd. Mm -hmm. So I sat up in bed and the, the, all these gnomes were around my bed giggling and pulling the bedclothes and giggling just like you would expect. Yeah. You're kind of like munchkins giggling. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't any of that, but giggling. And I sat bolt up and I, went, I believe in, let's do some fairies and gnomes and yes, okay, let me sleep. <laughs> and they just all bogged off because I started laughing. Yeah. Uh, and in the morning, I told my teacher, she just went, yeah, well, that'll teach you. Oh, right. For not believing, yeah. yeah. It's really funny. I taught a workshop on, um, just on the Earth Temple uh, of, um, of Kabbalah once, this is many years ago. And um, I remember telling a story about, there's another story in the same house, funny enough, that, that the gnomes happened, where I woke up in the night and I heard, um, I heard the beating of wings. And I looked up and, and a, a sylph, moved across the room and disappeared into there was a wall sconce which actually had this old house as in it was lord's prayer and this wooden kind of carved thing and it disappeared and went through it um two things i thought was interesting one i could i could hear it i could hear its wings her wings beating um obviously the oddest thing wasn't that i saw it um but um for me the size of size of her she she must have been two foot mm -hmm. she was tiny by any stretch of the imagination, she wasn't tiny. Um, and when I was teaching, I was telling this story. Uh, and in the morning, one of my students came down, were white faced, and um, I said, You okay? She said, No, I really need to speak to you. I thought, Oh, God, well, what's happened? <laughs> and um, she said, I saw a hair in my room last night. I went, And this is something my teacher had done to me. I went, Well, and yeah. So she's like, No, you don't understand. I saw a fairy. I went, yeah. And she went, oh, she said, it's the strangest things ever happened in my life. <laughs> I want to say, well, stand by, carry on studying. There'll be a lot more of that. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. So I've seen, a, I have seen, um, I have seen a sylph as well, physically seen as mm -hmm. a sylph. So in terms of uh, connecting with a fae and with elementals on a, on a sort of day-to-day -day basis, you mentioned about walking in the woods. Um, how do they, how do they kind of present to you when, when you, you sort of, in that place to me it's not it's not really the present to me it's more a case of um the minute i'm there it's just part of it it's just i'm i'm sometimes more conscious of listening to my podcast mm -hmm. or perhaps where the hell is that dog gone now mm -hmm. you no know, there's all of that going on but when you're in the the deeper peaceful moments and you're sitting by a by the lake or by the loch sorry by the <laughs> loch um then you um then you feel more connected. There's a place we go to in the forest and it has a, it has a, a table, probably the table would seat about six if it was a dining room table. It has three chairs behind it, uh, like thrones. Um, it's a, a rest stop so you can look at the lake and eat your, your food. Mm -hmm. But the table and the chairs are all carved with huge dragonflies. Wow. And it's very Lord of the Rings and very elemental. And it's my favorite place to be if there's nobody else there. You're tucking mm -hmm. into the <laughs> Um, we watch them eagle-eyed so they don't leave anything and mm -hmm. um, that for me is because you're surrounded by well earth air fire and water you, mm -hmm. they're there aren't they? yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. How would you recommend that other people um, start uh, becoming aware or getting in contact with, uh, with, with elementals? I think, first of all, familiarise yourself with what they are and why they are. So, you know, they, the, the gnomes tend to all the crap we chuck away and, and try to keep the earth in some kind of order and the sylphs are purifying and helping with the air and the, you know, I, I think, um, and they're also represented in us as well as that the, uh, our emotions, obviously, our practicalities, the earth ones, our passion for fire, um, our emotions for water, you know, they're, they're representative parts of who we are. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to connect with the actual elementals or fey worlds, really, um, pay attention. It is really as simple as that. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got, I don't, I don't, with rituals, I will always include um, ele elemental element, mm -hmm. but um, that's usually through color or, or incense or something. But I don't really do much with fate unless it's the equinox or solstice yeah. um, then i will particularly include the fey mm -hmm. um and if i'm doing outside work then i would use um you know i put food out for them and things like little cakes and things out for them. yeah I I'm, often... sure, I'm sure it wasn't a, a, anything else a hedgehog sure. no it's definitely <laughs> fey <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I often tell people that, you know, you don't have to do, it's not a big shebang, it's not a big ritual that you have oh. to do, just going out and uh, appreciating nature in its, in its beauty and giving yeah, yourself yeah, time yeah. to breathe, yeah. Um, and that's, don't that's... Shit behind. Exactly. You know? Yeah. yeah. I just, when you said about the gnomes, then I just had a, uh, had a vision of them being like wombles. Sort yeah, of they're going. kind of wild, yeah, the energetic wombles. Yeah, definitely. Like, unfortunately, or fortunately, maybe they don't. I went to, um, for the first time, I went to the forest because they, uh, you know, they opened the shops here just recently in Scotland and they opened um, all sorts of things, but they keep the car parks close to the forest. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I, uh, you know, it, be it beggars belief, it mm -hmm. absolutely beggars belief. But anyway, so I parked just outside up by the hotel and walked down through the car park mm -hmm. to get to the forest where everybody else is parked anyway, nose to jowl, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a beautiful tree stump just in the way of the walk, and it's always covered in ice. Sometimes you get really yummy mushrooms off it, and sometimes it's just bits of old moss, you know, things. And sitting right on top of it was, of course, a Costa cup with a half drunk, yeah, uh, a half drunk frozen drink. You just think, how can you even, how could you even bring yourself to do that? Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Just don't I know. Get it. I know. So. For me, it's like weeing in your own own house and not using the toilet, isn't it? You know, this it is. is it's our environment and we should be definitely should be looking after it. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's why, you know, then you weep. I, I kind of, I apologize. I always apologize mm -hmm. to the elephant, particularly it, when it's in that environment. It's Uriel, I say, you know. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not all yeah. of us like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it, yeah, and put it, in, put it in a bin that's like two foot from it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for having a, a, a chat. It's been absolutely lovely. I just want to um, ask you just a few more things. Um, if you could uh, just mention uh, you published. I have I have personally read majority of your stuff, I think. All of those books. All of those books, which are absolutely brilliant for beginners and advanced. You know, um, I, I particularly like this new one on your, your psychic development, uh, which has really helped me. And uh, the Kabbalah, Kabbalah uh, uh, book, which is... Whatever. <laughs> Kamala, Kamala, potato, potato. Yeah. It's um, I found that particularly useful. Um, reading it after the workshops as well, it kind of keeps in mind um, yeah. all the work that we did on that. Um, yeah. So we've got the psychic development one. Is that called psychic development? That, that uh, it's called oh God, just hundred years ago. <laughs> it's called uh, complete guide to psychic complete guide. Not too much ego to psychic development. <laughs> yes. And then you yeah. you book on uh, Kabbalah. Which yeah, think, uh, which is now called Cabla Made Easy. Which it is. It very much is. It's it's a good explanation. Um, and there's another one, isn't there? There's another uh, psychic development one. Uh, there's there's uh, there's um, oh god, there's real people, real past lives. Yes. Um, there's past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. And then there's another psychic one that I can't remember the title of. So, I can't uh, either. Psychic something. Psychic something. So, yeah. but if you if you type your name into a good search engine yeah. and yeah. and book afterwards, it should come up. And I know Psychic that... secrets. Huh? 
Psychic it, secrets. Sorry. Psychic secrets. There you go. Is that a secret you couldn't remember? It's all secret. So yeah. you've got your um, absolutely beautiful uh, oracle cards coming out. Um, I had the, the pleasure of having a sneak peek, uh, sneak peek at them last year, yeah. um, and you've been putting some of the uh, illustrations and the, the artwork on um, on your Facebook page. Is that right? And it's also on your website. Letter, really. It's, it's not on my website yet. No. Uh, so I, I, people can't order. There's nothing worse than seeing them. You can't order them. Oh come on, tempt people with it. Well, not quite yet, especially not when they're like five or six weeks away. Oh, no, 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 it's time to tempt. No, they've, well, they've been going out on my newsletter and they have been going out on um, the other things. Yeah, one mm -hmm. or two other things. Not quite on my website yet. Okay. So where will that be available to buy when it comes out? Uh, when they come out, they'll be available, obviously, through my own website. Mm -hmm. um, and initially with a company called Deep Books. Okay. They'll be the ones to go to if you can't... Um, like probably if you're abroad and things and postage a bit ropey for me. So, um, but I think uh, that, and then hopefully I do have a publisher or a distributor, I should say. Mm -hmm. Publisher is, is Solaris already done, but I have a distributor who will hopefully be doing America, Australia, because uh, deep books do Europe. Um, Brilliant. But the, uh, the other publisher will do those two other places. And, and the website's called, what's your website? Well, my website is yeah. davidwell.co.uk, so just my name, .co.uk. Okay, and I'll drop that in the link as well um, afterwards. So for the future, I know that we're in lockdown. I know you had some workshops planned. There was one with a paranormal team. It was a, a weekend planned. Um, are you still in limbo with that, with actually getting out there and doing physical workshops? Well, well that workshop's been shifted to February, I believe, mm -hmm. um, in the Forest of Dean, for anyone who's in that area. Lovely mm -hmm. place. To be. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not in limbo. There's there's definite things happening. It will be a different offer from me. It's um, um, like I said, it's a lot. I will. I will oh, it's so hard. I still want to be able to do like, especially past life work. Mm -hmm. the, the trouble is, you know, okay. I mean, the Awakened Soul course was a year. Yeah. Um, we barely scratched the surface. Although it was, you know, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, there was people like yourself and 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 several others who really went for it and. You know, I could see huge changes, um, but the problem is when it's a year. Sometimes we keep maintaining the, uh, you know, the motion of that. And we bear in mind when I studied, I studied for eleven years. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have online stuff then. We used to have to actually go and sit in front of a teacher. Imagine, um, uh, but but um, that's what makes it difficult to teach Kabbalah because it it's not something that can be done in two sessions, you know, or even right. six sessions. Yeah. Um, it's lifelong learning though isn't it it's about yeah. it's about recognizing the things that you're learning on the way and then coming back to them and it's back it's a backwards and forwards thing and i don't think you'd ever ever stop learning well, you I mean, anyone who says it i mean i i've like, i've been doing it what 25 nearly 30 years now and um i still consider myself a baby as far mm -hmm. as knowledge with it goes and every day you read another book and you think well like i said like regardless saying is there a regarding saying that Sand Alpha and she appears. I was like, well, what? Hello, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. She? Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, astounding, really, because you're always told that he, that um, Sand Alpha is the reincarnation of, I never remember which one it is, Elijah or somebody. Mm -hmm. like, a bloke, basically. A bloke uh, in the Bible. Bloke, it's a bloke in Bible, but not a woman. You yeah. know, and yet he's one of the, the most respected individuals in, in Western mystic um, tradition, Kabbalah, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there's a lot to do. There's, I hope the cards help because what they will do is they put it in the realms of, of your subconscious, of imagery, and less so perhaps of words. And that's really why I did them. And mm -hmm. um, my next, my second deck is, um, is similar. It's about, um, you know, doing the same sort of thing. Okay. Any fay in either of those cards? We um, well, the elements, the elementals are in the first, are in uh, the cabinet. Of course, they are. Um, the four, the three kings, one queen. Mm -hmm. So the, th the four rulers of the elements are in there. Um, the will, however, be more fay in the second deck. Definitely, I think I can guarantee there will be more fay in the second deck. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but they're very earthy. They're very, they're very only of not only the. They're predominantly here on on the earth realms in the other in the other worlds they they don't really hold as much prominence because mm -hmm. that's 
that's where they come from. Yeah, totally agree. Thank you so much for your time and having a chat with me about all things Faye. I um, hope to speak to you soon and I'll drop all your um, information down in uh, the link below. And um, again, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Kate. Take care.